All right, good evening, everyone. Tonight, first grade is going to provide you some activities that you can do at home that will help students um, with essential math skills and strategies. All the activities we're gonna provide today um, don't require any special materials. Um, they can be used with everyday household items you may have at home. You can go to the next slide, Ms. Polino. Thank you, ma'am. Do you need me to play this for us? I can explain it, Ms. Plano, and then we can um, play it. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. So we're gonna start by showing you how to create a dry erase board. Um, the only thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard from like a shoe box or a cereal box. And you can put it on side of a clear gallon size Ziploc bag and then a dry erase marker to practice different types of problems. You can use the dry erase boards for practicing writing numbers, working out math problems and other things like that. And Ms. Polina, you can play the video. Can you hear it? No, but it's okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the video is just um, showing how they can put the paper inside of the uh, Ziploc bag and then just use a dry erase marker to erase and practice different numbers and problems. We can go to the next slide. Um, the next activity we're going to talk about is counting. Counting is so important and students are required to rope count to 150 by ones. Um, and using videos is a fun and engaging way to help students reach this goal. Um, students should also learn how to count by fives and tens. And first grade will learn how to tell time using a digital and analog clock. And so students will need to be familiar with counting by fives in order to understand how to tell time on the analog clock. Place value is another important concept. Ms. Dobbins mentioned it um, for kindergarten and we will continue it in first grade. Students need to be able to group objects in tens and need to count in groups of 10 without counting each object which is why counting in tens is also important. Um, so these are just a couple of examples of videos. Ms. Polino, if your sound is working, you can just play one or two pieces. You don't have to play the whole video just so parents can see what the video looks like. Okay, I think I got it working. Let's hope. Pet. Click here to make your very own monster. Give me five on the right, five on the left, crisscross and stretch. Do your very best. Use your brain and body. Exercise. Count to 120 by fives. Crisscross your arms and do scissors. Five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Do leg squats from 100, 105, 110. 115, 120. Give me five on the right, five on the left, crisscross and stretch. Do your very best. Was that good? We're gonna press the pause? Okay. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, my cat's in the way. Uh, uh oh, wrong mouse. Sorry. <clears throat> And then for our next activity, we have a number scavenger hunt. So we've found that in first grade, we have some students that need support with this. And it's very imperative for first grade to be able to recognize numbers. So a fun way that they can do that is for them to just look for different numbers around the house, like on cereal boxes, uh, signs around the house. And so they can recognize and ask them what, um, how to find the numbers around the house. And you can uh, put that video to Ms. Uh, Polino. <laughs> Mm 
number hunt. Can you hear it? Find the numbers 1 through 20 around your house. Good. Okay. All right. Our next um, activity that you can do at home is called How Many Am I Hiding? In this activity, students find the missing number to complete the number sentence. This game helps students with addition and subtraction fluency as well as relating addition to subtraction. An example would be if I have 10 cubes. Um, that I decide to hide four in my cup. The student can see that I have only six cubes. So the student should be able to say that I'm hiding four cubes and that six and four make 10. Um, so this video shows, these videos show two ways to play the game. Um, if you could just play portions of both, Ms. Polino. Hey parents, me again. Want to see what a premium membership is all Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Albanese. Today, for Math Game Friday, I'm going to teach you one of my favorite games that you can play at home. It's called How Many Are Hiding Under the Cup. For this game, I used some pom-poms. But if you don't have pom-poms at home, you can use any other small objects. Buttons, beans, pasta, goldfish crackers, whatever you have. Let's count and see how many pom-poms I have. Remember what we learned this week. When we count, we can move things over so we don't count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten pom-poms all together. What happens if I put some pom-poms here and some pom-poms there? How many do I have all together? I still have 10. What about if I move them all over here and I leave this one here? I still have 10. Now here's how we're gonna play the game. I'm going to hide some pom-poms underneath this cup. I want you to close your eyes and you're gonna guess how many are hiding under the cup. Ready? Don't forget, we have 10 pom-poms all together. Okay, close your eyes. Open them. I have one, two, three, four, five pom-poms here. How many do you think are hiding under the cup? If you guess five, you're right. Let's try this game again. All right. <clears throat> All right, preschoolers, now we're going to do a math game. You can do this at your house with a cup and then with some counting objects. I'm using Legos. You could use any kind of toys or maybe you could even use some fruit snacks or cereal that you have at your house. If you're not sure what to use, ask someone in your house for help and they can give you an idea. All right. I'm using Legos and I want you to help me count how many Legos I have. I'm going to touch them and you count with me. One, two, three, four, five. I have five Legos. Thanks for helping me count. Now, this math game is going to be hiding some Legos under the cup and you're going to help me figure out how many Legos are hiding? All right, I'm going to hide some Legos under the cup and then you're gonna help me solve how many Legos are hiding. 
All right, I have some Legos hiding. How many are hiding? See if you can figure it out. Hmm. All right, let's try together. Remember, we had five Legos when we first started and some are hiding. How many Legos do we still have that we can see? We have one, two, hmm. Okay, let's see if we can do some counting on to see how many Legos are missing. I'm gonna put up two fingers, one, two. Now, we're gonna count on to see how many Legos are hiding. So we already have two out, so now we're gonna do one, two, that's kind of hard for my fingers, three. Oh, there are three fingers here. Two Legos are out, oh, three more fingers. Do you think there are three Legos hiding? Let's check and see. Oh, how many? One, two, Three, good job. Okay. Two. All right, and you guys ready for the next slide? Oops, sorry. <laughs> and then for our last activity for first grade, it's gonna help students with place value and we're currently learning about place value in first grade. So for this activity, you just simply put some small objects on a plate and you're gonna ask the student to make any groups of 10 with as many objects, um, with objects that they can. Once they have made the groups, you can ask them to tell you how many tens they have made and then how many ones are left. And then you can ask them to count by tens to find out how many are in all. And then the link that's provided is just kind of like, a, it's a website with activities. It's not a video, but you guys can scroll through to see like the different ways that you can do um, what objects you can use to make the tens and the ones. Awesome. Okay. All right. Any questions for our first grade families or even kindergarten families? If you have any questions, second grade, feel free to drop them in chat or you can share now or ask them, excuse me. Give it about 30 seconds in case any of our ELL families need. And parents, I shared in the chat a link to a survey we would love for you to complete at the end of the session. So please stick around and hear all the great vertical um, information from our second grade as well. Uh, but when you do leave, please complete that survey. Okay, we're going to move on to our last group of the evening, which would be um, last but not least, but our second grade team. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, and I'm not sure who's taking the lead for that team. It's gonna be me. All right, so I'm Miss Ewing. I am the team lead for second grade. We also have Miss Bruce, Mr. McCauley, Miss Smith, and Miss Stoll as fellow second grade teachers. Um, so the activity that we have, you can go on the next slide, sorry. The activity we have tonight is called Zap It. So if you signed up ahead of time, I sent home a bag with your students um with the materials for this activity if you are here um we will make note of who is here and we will send home this bag for the second graders that are here that did not receive it um so this game is a fluency game so it's addition and subtraction within 20 and the reason we are focusing in on this is because the more students have these facts memorized the helpful, more helpful it is because we do two digit and three digit addition and subtraction. So once they know their facts within 20, it makes the other skills that we do in second grade even easier. Um, Ms. Polina, you can go to the next slide. Uh. All right, so in your bag, you received 30 popsicle sticks and then a blue sheet that is in English and Spanish and that actually has the directions on how to play the game. The directions for creating the game are as follows. You'll first count out five popsicle sticks. On these sticks, you will write the word zap. 
On the other sticks, you will write different addition and subtraction facts within 20. So for example, seven plus nine, 15 minus eight, three plus five, 12 minus six. And you'll just write a variety of facts on all the other sticks, except for the five zap sticks. Um, you are welcome to put a fact on the front and a fact on the back. Um, so that way you can use them more often. And then Ms. Kalina, you can go to the next slide. So then once you have all of your facts and all your zaps written on your sticks, you'll take all the sticks, you'll mix them up, pour them out. Um, you can do this with a partner um, or you can do this with a group of you know three or more um, and then you'll need a timer. Um, so I would say to start, you could just set a timer for five minutes. Um, while you're playing, you'll take turns and you'll grab a stick. The goal is to solve the fact correctly. If you solve it correctly, you get to keep the stick. If you don't solve it correctly, you will put it back in the middle and then another person gets a chance to take that stick. If you pull a stick with the word zap it written on it, you have to put all of your sticks back in the middle and start over. When the timer goes off, the person with the most sticks is the winner. So this can be played obviously as many times as you want until um, you memorize the facts and it's a good way to practice those fluency skills. All right, Ms. Plano, you can go to the next slide. Um, so as far as in second grade, um, we are also working on iReady Math, which has a variety of skills and it levels them to where they're at in their math ability. Um, and then we are also using Reflex Math, which is another fluency game, and it focuses solely on addition and subtraction facts from zero to 20. Um, I know some of us are also using Prodigy, which is like a video game based math um, skills for them to do. They have to battle an opponent um, and to battle that opponent, they have to solve math problems. So that's a fun one that I know the kids enjoy. Um, and then some of us are also using Zern, which is based on Eureka. So it aligns perfectly with that. Um, so there's a whole variety of math apps for the students to use. Um, and they're all located on their Clever, which they have their password pages at home. And that's it. Oh, sorry there. Any questions for our second grade team or any of our presenters this evening? I'm gonna flip to the next slide, but you can keep the, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we're gonna ask that you complete the survey like Ms. Mullaney asked. And just to advise that our next parent night is go, for second grade, K2 is going to be next Tuesday. And we're going to be working on some activities for families to do at the house as well in regards to literacy. And that will be led by our um, interventionist, Don McClendon, and our teams will be there as well to support. 